the standout feature of the Indian financial sector in calendar 2023 is that the very face of Indian banking and finance literally changed in the year. The old stalwarts Deepak Parikh and KK Mystery exited the scene, handing over their baby, the giant HDFC, to Shashi Jagdishan's HDFC Bank. A younger veteran, Uday Kotak, also handed over the baton at Kotak Bank to Ashok Vaswani. The HDFC merger into HDFC Bank is going to eventually alter equations within the banking sector. The HDFC Bank loan book, which grew from around 16 trillion rupees pre-merger to around 23 million trillion rupees post-merger, means SBI's loan book, which used to be double the size of HDFC Bank's loan book, is now only one and a half times bigger than HDFC Bank's loan book. Literally, the gap between private and public sector banks got a bit narrow. But the change has taken its toll. HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank were the stock market's underperformers of the year, with their shares nearly flat, while a clutch of old private banks like CSB, JNK Bank, Karnataka, and some PSU banks like PNB, Central and Indian Bank rose between 50 and 100 percent. Indeed, there were mergers and changes in the NBFC space too. The year saw the rise of a consolidated Sriram group, merging Sriram City Union and Sriram Transport. While Geo Financial emerged on the bourses as a separate listed entity of, as a reliance group, NBFC. Its consolidated net worth of 1.14 trillion rupees is likely to make Geo Financial have a seminal impact on the M NBFC space, but that may be the theme of 2024. Coming to PNL performance of banks, it was a solid year for banking performance. The banking sector's profit grew by a solid 26% in FI23 to 2.28 trillion rupees, while in the first half of FI24, it did even better, growing its profit by 50% over the previous first half. Public sector banks did the best because of probably their weak base. PSU Bank's profit rose by 62% in full year FI23 and by 66% in the first half of FI24 over the previous first half. Bad loans, they continued to decline rapidly from 5.8% uh, of total assets in FI22 to 3.96% as of March 23 to 3.33% as of September 2023. Likewise, net NPAs have also fallen from 1.7% to 0.97% as of March 23 to 0.78% as of September 2023. Uh, banks continue to improve their margins. Net interest margins, or NIMS as we call them, rose from 2.92% in FI22 to 3.16% FI23, but after rising even further to 3.26% in quarter one of the current year, NIMS fell a bit to 3.21% in the second quarter. The story of falling net interest margins is the consequence of the Reserve Bank's interest rate and liquidity policy this year. The central bank, after raising rates in every single policy from April 22 to April 2023, unexpectedly stopped the hiking cycle, again proving to be ahead of the Fed, which stopped its hikes in July 2023. But an ugly 7.44% inflation in July in India, thanks to tomatoes and some disturbing trends in monsoons, you know, El Nino and all that, led the Reserve Bank to tighten liquidity in the banking system. The Reserve Bank announced an out-of-the-box incremental cash reserve ratio, ICRR as it's called, of 10% on all deposits that banks got from May 29th to July 28. This squeezed out over 1.1 trillion rupees from the interbank market, pushing up the call rates from 6.5% to 6.75%, which in turn pushed up interest rates throughout the industry. The blow fell most cruelly on HDFC Bank, which had raised almost half the deposits of the entire banking sector from May to July to back the loans of HDFC, which was merged into it from July 1. The ICRR was withdrawn, thankfully, in September 8th, but not the tight liquidity stance. 
many suspected that the Reserve Bank was seeking to keep Indian short-term rates higher than the US yields, where the tenure had shot up to 5% in October, triggering fears of a run on emerging market currencies. The Reserve Bank kept the rupee rock solid, stable with massive intervention, but by mid-December, the US yields had waned as the Fed had pivoted. But tight liquidity wasn't the only salvo fired by Reserve Bank. In November, sensing a sharp surge in unsecured loans, like, you know, credit card loans, personal loans, the central bank raised the risk weights to be maintained on such loans, making the loans expensive. Loans from banks to NBFCs also became expensive, but the biggest casualties were the fintechs who specialize in unsecured loans. Banking stocks were not the toast of 2023 like they had been in 2022. Bank Nifty had returned a handsome 21% in calendar 2022 when Nifty had risen by only 4.3%. But Nifty has returned a handsome 17% in 2023. Bank Nifty has been an underperformer with just about 10% gains. And this despite PSU Bank Index giving a 28% rise in 2023. The culprits are clearly HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank, both almost flat in 2023 as they struggled with merger in one and leadership transition or uncertainty in another. Will these two banks show mean reversion and emerge from their uncertainties? Will growth, that is both credit growth and bank loan growth, maintain the tempo of 2023? Will Reserve Bank follow the Fed with a dovish pivot at some point and cut rates, those will be some of the themes of 2024.